Hello everybody, we are on experiment 19 and uh, as you can see I've temporarily used a uh, different breadboard because I didn't want to change the wiring on my main guy and as you can observe right here um, we basically have a uh, here, let me repoint the camera for a sec we're basically bringing in power from uh, my uh, variable power supply and we are going to route it through a uh, voltage regulator chip right here and on the uh, end down there you can see we've got the ground hooked up straight to the breadboard so we're basically going to power the breadboard initially with the real power supply and run it through the voltage regulator and the output of this guy is going to be what uh, powers the bus line so there is no direct power to the bus line from the power supply so this is an LM8705 uh, and he uh, outputs uh, 5 volts uh, it takes in a range of around, I think it was um, I think you need to give him around set, or 6 or so up to like about uh, what is it, uh, 18 I think is a max at least for this particular spec and this is a 74HC00 so he's a CMOS chip he's a quad NAND gate chip which literally means there are four quad, or rather four quad, there are four NAND gate, uh, NAND gate chips uh, in this thing, uh, which means there's two pins that go in and one that goes out per gate. And all the rest um, are pretty much just your power on ground. So uh, in this case, the pin seven is ground and pin 14 is power. And we're only using one of those four NAND gates in this chip right now, so all the rest on the inputs are being set to ground because it's very important that the input pins, all input pins for CMOS chips, be given a distinct value. Otherwise, I think that you would refer to them as like a floating uh, pin, meaning there's no direct, uh, no direct value assigned and um, uh, different EMF type stuff can interfere and uh, the chip might pick up a random value that it, it really didn't uh, intend to pick up. So, as you'll see here, we've got um, we've got a couple. Uh, essentially, these are pull-up resistors that go to the uh, two inputs of the first NAND gate. Um, basically, setting it to, uh, setting both those pins, pins one and pins two, to ground by default. And if you press either one of these switches, the tactiles, it uh, opens up the path to power and um, you end up bringing power to one of those uh, paths to pins one or pins two. But unless you bring power to both of those, um, the output uh, will remain uh, true. But if you press both at the same time, the output will go false, meaning ground, and the LED will essentially go dark. Otherwise, this LED remains lit the whole time. And aside from that, um, why don't we turn this little guy on and we will see how he works. And I've got my multimeter in play here because I wanted to quickly just show, based on the input we're giving this circuit, uh, that we're really only getting 5 volts out. So let me just turn this thing up. And I'm going to turn him up to like 7 or 8, just somewhere above the threshold of where we need to go. Here, we're at uh, seven and a half, that should do us fine. So um, before we send it, you'll notice that the light is on. And if I check, I'm just gonna stick my uh, multimeter probe um, in the end of the banana plug for a sec so you can see what the real input coming in is. 7.56 volts. And I'm going to, uh, by the way, these two capacitors here are um, essentially smoothing capacitors. The electrolytic here is on the uh, input uh, between the true uh, power supply and the uh, regulator. So he is uh, essentially there to smooth out any bumps uh, that might occur, uh, fluctuations between the variable power supply and the input pin of the 7805. And then the little ceramic guy over here is uh, smoothing out the output from the 7805 um, to the uh, bus line. So if I touch the uh, somewhere on the bus here, that's power right there. 
you'll see we got 5.024 volts. So we're only off by about 24 millivolts uh, in terms of being spot on five, which is pretty good. So as you can see, we were running seven and a half from the supply and five on the uh, bus line. And this is really handy because apparently the CMOS chips um, really are picky about uh, their voltage supplies that they like to run on. And uh, in this case, five volts is the uh, sweet spot for this chip. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and move the, uh, move the multimeter real quick. And uh, we will just reorient ourselves. Uh-oh. One sec here. Don't. I just turned my power supply down because you do not want to try making uh, try making connections between these things when the uh, power is on, or we get some nice sparks. So one sec. I'm just trying to hook these guys back up. So again, we do not have any voltage pushing uh, <laughs> right now. I want to make sure that we don't end up. kind of tricky to uh, alligator clip over the top of a banana plug and a wire at the same time, but I think we're good if I can do that, move this line out of the way a little bit without snapping the wires back off. Let's see here. That should be fine. Alright, so anyways, let me pump the uh, voltage back up here. We'll bump it back up to like seven or so. And as you see, we've got the, the light is, uh, I guess it's a little bit tricky to see here, but there's your light. So I will just kind of tilt this guy for a sec. So um, if I push these two buttons, well here, I'll push one at a time first. As you see, there's nothing really nothing going on but if I press them both together we definitely get exactly what we were intending so um, that's pretty much just matching a uh, uh, you know typical NAND gate behavior um, so for those who aren't familiar with how NAND gate works um, or maybe even AND gates for that matter um, just go look up uh, on Google like logic gate uh, truth tables and it'll spell it out for you. Um, but the idea is if you've got, in this case, a basic AND gate would be if two things are true at the same time, then the output would be true. And when you have a NAND, uh, you're basically negating whatever your output would be on an AND. So when two things are true, the output is true, becomes false. But if either of the inputs is not true, the output initially on an AND gate would be false. And then you negate it, and it becomes true. So right now, we've before any buttons pushed, we've got two essentially falses from ground. You know, ground is false in this case. So um, you got two falses, and uh, those become well false and false is false, and then you negate it and it becomes true. And true in this case is power, and that's why the light's on. So hopefully uh, uh, this has been informative. Um, this is definitely a, a little bit of a relaxing uh, experiment compared to the last guy, but um, I'm certainly not going to complain. It's nice to be able to play around with some, uh, some new parts. And uh, I'm looking forward to experiment 20. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.